Okay, question four. We're now on to the second kind of half of the paper, so we're expecting these to be slightly harder questions. These are the high demand questions. Uh, so look out for things like rearranging you're going to have to do, or conversion of units, or just some applications of some harder concepts. So here we're talking about uh, miners working the salt mine use smooth wooden slides to move quickly from one level to another. So here's the gentleman there sliding down his slide. Looks like a fun wee job. And you've got some data in here. Don't ignore that. That's 15 meters vertical drop. So what do we have to do with this information? A miner of mass 90 kilograms travels down the slide, so we know mass. Calculate the change in gravitational potential energy of the miner when he moves 15 meters vertically downwards. Gravitational field strength is 10 newtons per kilogram. So, it tells you to use the correct equation from the physics equation sheet and show clearly how you would work out your answer. I'll just give you a moment to have a go at that. Go to your physics equation sheet, find the equation you think most appropriate. Bear in mind you know what the mass is, you know a height, and you know gravitational field strength. And you want to work out gravitational potential energy. Okay, so I hope you found from the uh, equation sheet that gravitational potential energy is equal to mass times gravitational field strength times height. Now it's just a simple case of putting the numbers in where they go. But before we do that, let's check they've got the correct units. So that's the mass, 90 kilograms, yep, that's okay. 15 meters, that's the height, yep, meters, that's what we want. And that is gravitational field strength, G, so newtons per kilogram, yep, that's the same as that, kilograms, kilograms, so we're okay. So M is 90 times G is 10 times 15, that's H. Okay, now I'll reach for the calculator. Always do use a calculator. There's no need to do extra brain work than you need. 90 times 10 times 15, 13,500. Don't worry about reading it out or knowing what the number says. Just write down every digit on your calculator. Okay, you don't need to put a unit on because there is one at the end there and it's only worth two marks. Next section now. Calculate the maximum possible speed the miner could reach at the bottom of the slide. Use the correct equation from the physics equation sheet. Show clearly how you work out your answer. You give your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. So that's where that third mark is coming from in this question here. Okay, I'll give you. Oh no! I'll, before I ask you to go to the equation sheet, I will tell you the principle that this question is based on, in case you, you've forgotten it. It's the principle that when something falls, gravitational potential is converted into kinetic energy. So we say that if there was no drag or res air resistance or friction, then all of the gravitational potential would be converted into all the kinetic. So from that, we can work out the speed. And I will just mention this as well. Within question four, every bit of data we've been given and every um, data we've calculated can still be used. So don't be phased by the fact there's no numbers given you in this section of the question. There's no da extra data given. The data is stuff that's already appeared in the question. Okay, have a go and then come back. So we know that potential energy is 13,500 and hopefully you've found the equation for kinetic energy which is a half times m 
mass times velocity v squared. Okay, now we're saying our theory in this question is that all of the potential energy is converted to kinetic. So we're saying that actually 13,500 equals a half times the mass which is, we know that from the previous one, 90 times the velocity squared. And this, I think, is probably the easier way to do these rearrangings with kinetic energy. But you could, of course, rearrange the algebra for V equals and then input your numbers and you'd still end up with the same answer that I will get this way. I have done a video in which it does show you how to do the two rearrangings for kinetic energy. Stick to whichever one's you're comfortable with or remember the rearranged form. So this way we'll do the inverse of operations. So what we're going to do each time is one number at a time, we're going to move it across until we're just left with V equals. So let's move times by a half and do divide by a half. Again, let's use our calculator. 13,500 divided by 0 0.5 equals Two seven zero zero zero. Equals ninety times v squared. Because we haven't done anything with those yet, have we? Now let's move our times ninety. Inverse of times ninety becomes divide by ninety. So in my calculator. 27000 0, 0, 0, divided by 90 gives me 300. So now I've got 300 equals v squared. But I don't want v squared, I want v. So the inverse of square is square root. So I'm going to have to root my answer. square root of 300 equals v which is 0.3 I'll show you what it says on the calculator 17.320508088 ah that's a lot ah well, it tells me I need to give it to an appropriate number of significant figures. What's an appropriate number of significant figures? Is that appropriate? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? No, that's not the appropriate, is it? Well, what kind of numbers, what, how many significant figures have we had in that data? We've got three sig figs there, we've got two sig figs there, so that's more appropriate, isn't it? Let's use um, either two or three. To two significant figures, it would be 17 meters per second. Or to three significant figures, it'd be 17.3. And both are acceptable for the three marks. I will just say one more thing here. If you've done the previous one wrong, so let's say the mass, no, rather, the potential energy you worked out was different to this, then you could still end up with a different answer, but I've got all of the rest of the question right and still get your free marks. So whatever you've put for the previous one, just use it as your potential energy and make that your kinetic energy. All right, difficult one, but easy when you know how. Now, in reality, the maximum speed of the miner is gonna be much less than what you calculated and explain why. I've already kind of talked about a couple of reasons why. Uh, look though, three marks. We're really looking for specifics here. And there's a few bits that people kind of leave out when they argue this, even though they really do understand why. Okay, have a little think about what's happening to that energy and why all of the potential energy is not actually converted into kinetic energy. Okay, I'll leave you to have a go at that. All right, now most people straight away say, well, I know why this is, because in reality, there's friction.
great. If you've got friction down on there, then you've got a mark already. Okay, there's friction between the minor and the slide. That's not good enough for free marks, is it? So, uh, what else do you need to do? Well, that friction is a type of force, and it's a force over a certain distance. So, therefore, the, it, there is work done. Okay, work is a type of energy which has been used mechanically. So there's been a force over a distance, work done, so force times a distance. So therefore, energy has been used mechanically. This is the bit that people miss out. For the third mark, you can either talk about the smoothness of the slide or the roughness of the clothing, but I think that's a bit trickier um, because actually friction depends on the two surfaces, not just the one. I would suggest we just hear, well, what happens to that energy that is done as work then? Where does it go? Well, if you like, it's kind of wasted energy. And you remember from unit one, what happens to energy that isn't transferred usefully? Okay, it is dissipated in the form of heat. to the surroundings. So you could just say that the slide heats up, the energy goes to heating the slide or to heating the miner's bum or anything like that. Okay, let's move on to the next one then guys.